everybody, and welcome to lesson 16.3 in the ALICE tutorial series. Uh, lesson 16.3 is simply a, an extension of lesson 16.2. Uh, in 16.2, we introduced keyboard movements and the let arrow keys control subject event in Alice, and we started making a program in which a cow ran around the world eating hay bales. Now, we had programmed the move functionality, and we've even programmed a uh, jump command into uh, that program, allowing our cow to jump, but we really have no end game right now. The cow can move around the world and eat hay bales, but when all the hay is gone, the game just kind of goes on infinitely. So what we're going to work on today is adding some kind of win condition. That is when the cow eats all three hay bales, a message displays to the user letting them know that they won. Um, after that, we'll turn you loose on a challenge program to make sure that everybody can program their own games using these same principles. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 16.3, the extension of keyboard movements in the previous lesson. Well, this is all well and good. We want to have some sort of finale to our game. When all three hay bales are eaten, we want the user to know that they've won. To do this, I'm going to uh, first, go into Add Objects and move my camera. Well, actually, we can do this without moving the camera. Let's go ahead and add some 3D text to the world. So go to Add Objects, 3D Text. And let's select, um, we'll go with the uh, Boring Old Times New Roman. And I'm going to add a message, You Win. We'll even make that bold. And add that text to the world. We're going to orient this so that it takes up the screen. Whoops. We want to turn you win. So it generally faces the camera. We're going to minimize it a little bit and we're going to raise it. So that looks about right. Let's go ahead and uh, select the properties of you win by going to 3D text properties. And let's change the color to Let's make it red. So there's our winning message. Of course, we don't want this visible at the very beginning, so we're going to set the is showing property to false initially. So it's there, it's just not showing. And we always want this to be moving with the camera, so we're going to set the vehicle property to the camera. Now, even though the user doesn't know it, that you win message will constantly be displayed in front of them, although it's invisible at the time. We want to write a line of code that will make that visible if the user manages to eat all three of the hay bales. This check may end up looking more complicated than it is, so follow along and we'll talk about why this works the way it does. I'm going to add a final if statement to my while loop. And I'm going to check really three things. I want to know, are all three hay bales invisible? If all three hay bales are invisible, that means the user must have come within two meters of each hay bale, and that means that they've won the game. So we need to do one final check. And again, this is another situation where for all in order or for all together could help us out, but we're going to stay away from those right now. Okay, uh, I just had a little bit of a problem with Alice too. Alice just crashed on me, so you might notice my screen looks a little bit different now. I tried to recreate exactly what we had, but I had to rebuild the program because Alice crashed. So this should be real similar to where we were just a second ago. At any rate, what I want to do is check to see if all of the hay bales have disappeared. I'm going to do this by adding one final if statement. Select straw bale number one, and we want to know, is straw bale number one invisible? And it's only going to be invisible if the cow has come within two meters of it. So select is showing, and right now this if statement says, if the straw bale is showing, we're going to run a certain line of code. The line of code that we're going to run is making our you win message visible. So right now, if I were to run this program, the user would instantly win. And the reason the user would instantly win is straw bale number one is currently showing. 
What I really want to check is, is it invisible? Is it not showing? The way you're going to tell Alice that you want to check that is by clicking on this little arrow next to is showing, going to logic, and selecting not straw bale is showing. In other words, we're checking to see, is the straw bale currently not showing? If I hit play right now, I can see the uwin message is invisible, and the only hay bale we're checking right now is hay bale number one. When my cow eats hay bale number one, the uwin message displays in front of the screen. Of course, the user doesn't win if they eat straw bale number one, they have to eat all three. So we need to expand our check to see if straw bale one, two, and three are all not showing. To do that, we're going to use something called a Boolean operator. And really, it's the words and, or, and not. We want to know straw bale one is not showing, and two and three are also not showing. We need all three of those to be true. So click on the arrow. It's the arrow on the furthest right. Select logic, and do not straw bale is showing, and we'll use true as a placeholder. So you can think of this right here as we have one check, is straw bale one not showing? But I need both straw bale not showing and whatever goes here to be true in order for you win to execute. What I want to check is, is straw bale two not showing? So straw bale two is showing, click on the arrow next, immediately next to is showing, select logic, and not is showing. In order for the 3D text to be set to true, we now need straw bale 1 and straw bale 2 to disappear. If we hit play, we can now eat straw bale number 1 to no effect. And once we eat straw bale number 2, we get our winning message. We're just going to repeat this process one more time, adding in the third straw bale. So click the arrow on the furthest right, select logic, and both not straw bale is showing and not straw bale is showing and. So we've got three and checks here and put in a placeholder value of true. Just like we did last time, drag the is showing property for straw bale three in as the placeholder, adjust it to not by selecting logic, not straw bale three, and now we have a check that looks a lot more confusing than it is, but really every time this while statement gets to the bottom, it says, is straw bale one, two, and three, are all three of those not showing? And if all three are not showing, the you win message will be set to true. Hit play. Eat straw bale number one. Eat straw bale number two. And finally, when the user eats straw bale number three, they've won. And this will work for any order they eat the straw bales in. We can start with two, then three, and then one, and still get the winning message. That is kind of the essence of interactive programming. We don't know what order the user is going to play this game in. We don't know what order they're going to eat the hay bales in or how long it's going to take. So our program has to allow the user to do whatever they want, but still react appropriately when the time comes. And that's going to do it for keyboard movements uh, for lesson 16.2. You know, certainly there's a lot to kind of take in in this lesson and it's something that you're going to want to practice. Now, of course, we aren't done with program interactivity. There's still lots of stuff to cover, but I think that's enough for one lesson, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Lesson 16.2 Challenge program to make sure that you understand what went on in this video. So here you are looking at the Lesson 16.3 Challenge program. You can see we've created a world using the uh, Cities Gallery. I believe we used the airport from the Cities Gallery as well as some buildings. And you can see on the screen now we have an airplane crash. And as we hit play, the screen is going to pan away from the airplane crash to a car crash here in the parking lot. 
And then finally, the camera's going to settle on a police car. Now, the premise of this challenge program is giving the user the ability to move the police car around the world and choose which accident they want to respond to. So if the user decides to drive to the plane crash, when they arrive, a, an appropriate message, you have arrived at the plane crash, prints on the screen. And if the user pulls away, the message disappears. If they then drive to the parking lot to where the car crash occurred, when they arrive there, they get an appropriate message, you've arrived at the car crash. And if they back away, the message disappears. It doesn't matter what order the player shows up to the emergencies at, the message will only display when they're within a certain distance from each of the emergencies. So your job is to create a program in which the user has control of a police car, and there's several emergencies that they can choose from, and if they arrive at an emergency, they are receiving an appropriate message. Now this can be a little bit tricky. The one thing that you want to make sure is that you have the messages displaying and turning off um, properly. Now I put that all into a while loop so you can see just like we did in the uh, Lesson 16.2 and Lesson 16.3 videos, this entire program is controlled by a single while loop and it has a series of three if-else checks to make sure that the program is working correctly. So see if you can get that program working now as a side note to this uh, challenge program, one thing to keep in mind is I use the fire from the special effects uh, gallery, and you'll notice when you drag fire into the world, it creates new events for you. Um, each one has, when the world starts, do fire spin like crazy. You can kind of minimize those. Um, you might understand what they're doing now that we've had a chance to look at some events, but don't let that kind of cloud writing this program. You can ignore all the stuff that fire adds if you decide to use fire from the special effects gallery. Uh, you can see all I've really done is let the arrow keys move the police car and you might want to add some additional functionality like maybe you want to add some sounds or the ability to turn the sirens on. I mean, certainly be creative but that is your Lesson 16.2 Challenge program. Create a world in which the user can drive a vehicle around to different scenes and the program intelligently knows where the user has arrived and what scene they have arrived at. Now, if you have any problems with this or something didn't quite make sense to you, just uh, leave those questions in the comments. And of course, I'll be happy to help you figure out how to make your programs work. I'd like to thank everybody for your support of the Alice tutorial series. I'm looking forward to the future lessons. Thanks and have a great day.